Pick up your gear and open your chest. Throw on your armor and head out on a quest. Hey, hey. It's a brand new day. Hi. Oh, God. He had it hard enough to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Moving right along, we've got Tanya. Oh, oh you are. Oh. Still muted. Still muted, muted for actually. Us. <laughs> yes, you should, because I'm a doofus. There um, it is. Sorry, it's been a morning. Hi, I'm Tanya. I play Celise, she, her, and I. I'm here. It's yeah. been a morning. <laughs> We're happy to have you here. Thank you for being here. And we've got coming up right next, Brian. Hey, I'm Brian. I play Virgil, the Asimar Sorcerer. Virgil's pronouns are he, him, mine, or he, they. There you go. Up next, Kent. Hi, everybody. Sorry. That's okay. Go. I'm Ohanyo. I'm Deep Jazzy, and so I'm playing Kent, uh, our Phantom Rogue Tiefling. You know, I was looking at your nameplate in Zoom, and I was like, yeah, that's the name. And then the wrong name came out, and I, I'm i sorry. Uh, like we said, unfortunately, uh, Sharif is not with us today, but he will be back with us soon, and we thank him for, and we miss him. But then that leaves me. Hey, I'm Masood. I'm your GM. I usually play Gazric Nomad, everyone's favorite socialist businessman druid construct. Um, but this season... I'm playing all the NPCs as the GM, so my pronouns will be an assortment as they represent the characters that our characters interact with. Um, and so without further ado, I just want to throw it over to Brian to say thanks to the folks who make it possible. 
Thank you, Masood. We would like to give a special thanks to our sponsors that make our game more awesome. First off, we use D&D Beyond for our digital character sheets and access to book content, encounters, monsters, me looking up how Magic Missile works because I still don't get it after all this time. You know, the usual. <laughs> um, you can always check them out at D&D Beyond. And currently we have a giveaway. You must be here and uh, live in chat to, sorry, you must be here and live. Sorry for the podcast listeners. I just messed that up for all of you. Um, but it's going to be Dragonlance, Shadow of the Dragon Queen. So mm -hmm. do watch out when the mods throw in the giveaway a little bit later on. We are also proud to be sponsored by Die Hard Dice. Do check them out at dieharddice.com. Use code Rivals for 10% off. Get yourself some lovely little clicky clack Mac rocks. We love it. And for geeky gear and uh, lovely swag and things like that, do check out Stormcrow at shop.stormcrow.com. Use code RIVALS for 15% off. The code RIVALS, again, will not get you secret access to Masood's mug. You have to contact him directly for that. Go look at Masood Hawk's contact information. We'll get to it later. It's in the back and, pages. See, there you go. And if you want to sound oh so silky smooth like the RIVALS crew, check out Blue Microphones at crew.bluemon... Well, okay, that wasn't smooth. <laughs> I was smooth, and then I wasn't smooth. Crew.bluemike.com slash rivals. We are also partnered with Idle Champions by Codename Entertainment. Do type exclamation point code for this week's free Electrum chest. You can get all Rivals of Waterdeep right now in game. That is Kent, Virgil, Solis, Tahani, and Gosric, as well as some familiars that we have helped created. Disco, Pest, Fenris. In addition to characters played by us on other shows, you can also get Fen. Uh, you can also get friends of the show. You can get like the Black Dice Society. You can now get Solok, which is an awesome ranger from Dragonlance played by Gabe Hicks right now. Like, ah, just go do it. It's all it's all free. Idlechampions.com. Code for the chest. There you go. And um, I, I was going to Kermit flail, but you know what? It's better if somebody who professionally can change their voice can do the Kermit flail. So why don't we talk about voice mod, Hanyo? Yay! <laughs> Welcome to Voice Mod. I am a poorly trained opera singer whose vibrato is out of control. Oh my God. Which <laughs> has remember. nothing to do with you going to voicemod.net to try <laughs> this out. Yeah. Use code rivals for 5% off. <laughs> And also, we'll get 5%. Cheers. Incredible. I'll be real. If your favorite instrument was a vibraphone going up, you got to get voice mod. Because that that is just piqued my interest so much. I am slain. I am dead. I'm oh, deceased. my goodness. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's. We want to give a thanks to all of our ad reads and uh, awesome. Brian and Eugenio. Thank you for covering that. And now I want to throw it to our whoosh captain, Whoop. Latia. It's what happened me. previously on? Uh, I don't know. We we haven't gotten there yet because we haven't whooshed. Mm -hmm. Are we ready? Holding here today. I yeah. So. yeah, I think yeah. everyone. All right. Previously FRS. on Rivals of Waterdeep. Whoosh. <laughs> Heck yeah. Awesome. Oh, and there they go in the chat. We love to see Always. them. Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. You reminded me of... Oh, you have the free uh, version of voice mod. I see. I see. <laughs> I or that one character. The artists, yeah, you know, back yeah, yeah, yeah. Respect. That yeah, one yeah, character yeah. in Dracula Dead and Loving It. Also that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. All right, y'all. What happened previously on Rivals of Waterdeep? We had a long conversation with some doppelgangers about mm -hmm. how uh, no one the trusts current... them for both good and bad reasons. <laughs> and yeah. how the current situation is untenable. Is untenable. Untenable. And we're suckers for an untenable situation. <laughs> so yep. obviously, we went to the graveyard to figure things out. What? No. Um, <laughs> we had a lot of leads from mm -hmm. two sessions ago about things going on in the city. But whatever's going on in the city of the dead... Uh, it seems to tie a bunch of threads together. We found some of Virgil's family crest there in the City of the Dead, so that sort of drew us. Duo, the astral projection of Duo, not doppelganger Duo, told us that he woke up in the City of the Dead and then came back to Troll Skull from there when he was Ghost 2.0. I don't, I don't know how to begin to discuss this with him. Uh, <laughs> so we decided that all roads converged at the City of the Dead, and so that's where we headed. 
we discovered a bunch of grave robbing situations from some of the mausoleum there, the ones mostly of the more affluent families in town, not the sort of uh, more low key graves, which did, be right. for a moment exactly make oh, us sort yeah. of be like, well, maybe this isn't so bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but because Duo was involved and we love our little ghost, not ghost, uh, we went down, I believe it was the Melshimber mausoleum. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Went into the Melshimber mausoleum, uh, followed some tracks, got up to this wall that we, or this door or something that we sort of walked to the end of and then turned around and we were suddenly elsewhere. Uh, then we got attacked by some zombies, which was very fun because uh, <laughs> we were not afraid. We just got to kick some booty. Right. Um, really resolved the fight in one round of combat. It was one full six seconds demolished. It was very literally, we yeah. do not have time for this today. Like, yes. <laughs> yes. And so in six seconds, we dispatched, I think it was six different zombies. It was four, yeah. four it zombies, was four two zombies. zombies. Ogres. Two zombie ogres and a ogre and a zombie. And a zombie beholster. There you go. There it is. Yes. 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 Um, <laughs> <laughs> um oh, I, oh what we were what we were discussing with the doppelgangers, we yeah. did make Doppel Duo um show us who hired oh who yeah. basically paid Doppel Duo to take out actual duo, and it turned out to be Lairn who Virgil encountered in like at some point during his year flashback. Mm -hmm. That's right. And we haven't really dealt with that yet. There's been a lot going on. There's, there's been a lot going on. Yeah, a lot going on. <laughs> also, uh, it's very important to note that um, while we were busy searching the mausoleum and picking up pieces of actual duo's corporeal clothing, um, this corporeal clothing, once put together, uh, formed a very familiar symbol of the Xanathar, who then yes. spoke to us, therefore summoning the four regular zombies, two zombie ogres, and a zombie beholster. That is. Every time now, from now on. Mm. <laughs> um, just why yeah. if you guys see the Xanathar, he's going to have a lot of guns. Just, just know that that's going to be my interpretation. <laughs> Woo, the holster gunslinger. Love the, it. First, the first six rounds is just... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's got 10 eye stalks. They better yeah, not yeah, have yeah. developed prehensile thumbs or whatever. Um, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> prehensile lashes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Sometimes you need a lash look, though. I'm just yeah. saying. Like... <laughs> <laughs> but I think that basically wraps it up. You all... Oh, we had a moment with uh, Shaka talking to um, his buddy... Nagru and sort of was oh, having a con wow. yeah I almost forgot it and then I'm right. like nope it's in there it's, it's <laughs> locked away now uh they were talking about um sort of what they did with the building joke building in the time since it's uh, mm -hmm. sort of removal Rather, uh, what Nagru got from Shaka that he then intimated that that was his idea all along yeah he's, he's like, a very shrewd yeah. contractor um and uh was able to do a little light work uh, mm -hmm. building out the um, actual, like, this new park that's now in the North Ward, um, was talking to Shaka a little bit about how, you know, some of the previous workers that he had been uh, interacting with, like, he hasn't really heard from them again. There's some field ward citizens, and there's some other mystery that's been happening, not just what mm -hmm. the, uh, what was told at the uh, Mass Lords meeting. Um, and so... Other than that, I think that pretty much covers all of the other material, I believe, right? I think so. Yeah, think so. Like if you think so, like, then so do I. Yeah, definitely. And I, so this isn't a this isn't like me trying to set you up. I really think like, we, got the, we got the thing to the north, which is the field ward, the yeah. thing yeah. to the east, which is the city of the dead, the yeah, thing yeah. to the southwest, which is the watery thing, which I suspect uh -huh. we're about Unreleased to find cash. out. Cash. Unreleased cash. Unreleased cash. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, and smugglers, right. smugglers, something is the name of that. Smugglers hellscape. No, I don't think that's called something. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we'll get the interactive map up again and we'll take a look. At it. Oh no, <laughs> hold on. It's anyway. fine. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, um, let's do so it. Yeah. Okay, I think that's perfect. We take you guys back to where we left off. You're underground in the Malshimber Mausoleum. It is empty now. The whiff of a uh, sea breeze carries as the last of uh, Virgil's magic disseminates from the air. The the chain lightning, I believe you did, uh, to eliminate the rest of who was left over. Uh, as their smoldering, rotting corpses uh, linger in this fetid and putrid environment, 
Uh, what do you all want to do? I don't, I don't know. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, so once again, we still smell, we still smell the, like the, the salt air in addition now to oh yeah lots of of charred poison plant matter lightning zombies yeah. all like all that gross stuff great mm -hmm. um is it is it still like a, like i guess right now has anything else activated like we saw what appeared to be magically activated lights is there any other passageway now that we are in this room that was the the i think it felt like it was either circular or octagonal like eight crypts around is there anything yeah. else that appears to be like oh this way out for sure. Give me invest uh, perception, investigation, as you're now taking a gander of the space. Uh, you could just tell me. Yeah, I could fine. just tell you. It's okay. <laughs> We're all dies. We have fun. No, this is why it's just 11. What do you get and what else do you get? That's the question. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have high numbers. I want to reward. Who are the 11. Okay, that's not bad. You, I mean, so first and foremost, you take in what you see around you. Uh, and you see that behind uh, where the beholder... Yes, Beholder. That now, for whatever reason, that seems wrong, and it's not. <laughs> the Beholder was, there's a uh, sort of brick wall that begins to slowly fall, and you see staircases leading up. That's some Baldur's Gate 3 shit. <laughs> <laughs> Says Kent. Not <laughs> wrong. No, yeah. I, yeah, we... It was like, yeah, you know, I went to the first Baldur's Gate before they updated it. <laughs> yeah, 3.0, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 3.0, it's a nice spot. Oh my gosh. Um, oh, here's another question. So we yeah. pieced together pieces of Duo's clothes and we got the full sigil, but is that the entirety of this garment? Like, have we found all the pieces of this garment now? Well, I mean, you got an 11 in them to tell you that you saw no, the door open. Virgil that... got an 11. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. Virgil's not the only pair of eyes in this room. I mean, well, just, and I that's why I'm counting the well, zombie Kent beholder, got eight. which is a lot of pairs of eyes. So, I mean... Kent's got an eight, so I'm not sure he sees the door. Absolutely. <laughs> I think you uh, are caught up in a moment of a familiarity of just like <laughs> seeing Virgil like absolutely decimate this space. Well, that's uh, familiar. <laughs> demolish the rest of them. And uh, I think for you, for free, I, you will note, because you noted it before. Yeah. This lingering scent of magic is mm -hmm. oddly common from before and then right after when Virgil did cast the spell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, and then uh, Tahani gets a 19. With the 19, you're looking around. And so in the space, you find the sort of like actual remains of uh, Duo's shirt. He takes you over to it and it's like, oh yeah, that, that that's what it is. The, the sigils sort of mm -hmm. uh, burn still on there. And yeah. uh, Tanya, if you wanted to roll for Celise, just a perception check of what you all see post fight. Mm -hmm. And so you grab the scraps themselves and sort of are looking at them. It's okay. the full shirt, also a 19. Very nice. We're going to cut to what uh, Celise just actually. I'm going to let you think about this and I'm going to cut to you. No. I, I, I just for a moment. Oh, no. Think about your. I want to do a flashback with Celise being a detective. Because you are entering what? detective mode in this, because they've been hunting after Faye, right? Like that's what oh. they were doing over the past year. And I want you to think about standing in the desolation of this fight, if it takes you back to another fight or like another moment where you had sort of a jump. And we're going to come to you in a moment, but I'm going to resolve uh, Latia's 19 okay. as, uh, and then we'll, using that inspiration, sort of lead into yours. Does that feel good? Yeah. Cool. So, so, honey, you pick up the scraps of the shirt and see that, like, it's the front half of it. The other half is gone wherever it is. You're looking around. You don't really notice it in the space. But upon, uh, you know, we'll get there. But if you want to say so, I'm going to say yes. That's that little backstage chat. But uh, <laughs> so uh, you're looking at the actual shirt itself. You see um, some burnt markings on it. You see uh, the actual sigil. And as it um, is burnt, you begin to feel on the back of it some coarseness, something a little rough. And as you pull apart, you see a shard of sea glass sort of tucked into the middle of the shirt. That's weird. Mm -hmm. Also, I would like to ask Duo if he remembers this 
sigil being burned onto the clothing while he was in it. Oh. Oh. You know, I feel like I would have remembered that. I think they they might have taken that off my body, which is rude in the first place. Um, but I guess they didn't need it because the doppel me just like made clothes out of himself. Yeah. Okay, uh, I just wanted to see if yeah. there was anything that was, you know, coming to your mind about this as I no. kind of like pocket the, well, pocket yeah. the sea glass. Well, I mean, he like holds it up and he like senses it and he holds it for a moment and he just kind of like shifts like floats naturally to the west like like a compass or a dowsing rod kind of deal i mean those are your words and not mine but those no. that that is something that occurs in this space does he look like he's doing this consciously yeah ask him <laughs> duo are you do, do you look like you're doing this consciously what oh oh guys uh why did you rotate around me that my yep. moment you cool. rotated yourself what um i'm gonna alert everybody that duo is drifting <laughs> and while tahani is alerting the drifting of the group uh tanya yes what has been going through your head in this moment as you've been standing in truly the uh the waste of this last fight. Uh, Tanya's been wondering how she wound up in a D&D world. Solis is wondering. <laughs> Solis is, she's kind of doing her own drifting because yeah. amongst all of this stuff, she finds like the tiniest bit of a cloak that she would have given Faye. It's on one of the zombies. There's like a little bit of it tucked away almost in their palms and you like pull it apart and you see you know it instantly the fabric the stitching the design gifts were a thing you don't give often and when you do you think about them quite a bit and so instantly in that moment you know this was the cloak that you gave for fit and that zombie must have been reaching for and maybe it ripped that off right so she's been here for some reason. You look around with your 19 and you see settled, like faded into the dust. Some of footprints that you couldn't notice before in the quickness of the fight and the, the blindness of following just a simple lantern light. There's faint moonlight now drifting past the stairs in and you get a little better glimpse of what's around. And you notice the footprints of your companions and the faint hovering of duo's ghosts like moving and shifting dust but these footprints you'd recognize some of them are set around a few of the actual um mausoleums themselves there seems to have stopped at one in particular do you take a look inside of course you move over you shift aside, you notice that the lid had been placed back, but is a little bit easier to move. And as you push it across, you see bones, remnants of what probably was an adorned, very prominent member of the Melchimber family, buried with their finest things, now stripped bare. Hmm. So clothing, jewelry, all of it. Clothing is like kind of still there for what hasn't been like eaten away by the moths and any other other like worms and things like that. But the actual you see what would have been like a ring dent on their finger in particular on their uh, left handed ring finger of this individual is gone. So some kind of like family crest or a wedding ring might have been there. Yes. You um, summarize. Yeah. Um, I, I note all this down and then I turn to the others. Faye is involved in this somehow. Not sure how, not sure why, but and I show them the piece of cloak. Because I remember Kit took me shopping to help me pick that out 
I'd know that cloth anywhere. Have to do some more digging once we're back in Waterdeep. But I think I've gotten even more reason to want her head. Well, I mean, I guess we follow the door that I have now been shown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that where the moonlight? Thank you both for that's the moonlight's that, yeah. filtering through the staircase that was behind um, where the beholder was sort of like positioning themselves. I will. Still smells like sea air, right? Like we're moving west for sure. Well, I, the now that the door is open, the uh -huh. sea air is dissipating. The smell of it oh, is gone. Oh, yeah, that's even weirder. So, <laughs> I mean, Al, Al, truly, anyone give me an Arcana check? Oh, something I should be good at. <laughs> you know what? While uh, the magic people, which I realize yeah. is also in small part Kent now, but he's <laughs> not, whatever. Uh, I'm gonna just very <laughs> carefully and quietly just sort of go a little ways up the stairs and see if I can get a peek of the outside since there's moonlight coming in. Absolutely. Uh, 18 Arcana. Nice, nice. I think Tahani and you, none of y'all beat a 20, so I can't give you the fullness of it. But I will mm. uh, tell you this. So. There's a way that magic <clears throat> works in this world. There's certain components that are required. There's certain things that are necessary. Like when Gosrick's around, you see him ripping through his beard using items that he needs to cast Wait a minute. spells. Did we know that Gosrick's component pouch was his beard? We've yes, always we, known we, this. He's yes, always been pulling. Okay. Yeah, okay, we've okay, seen okay, him reach for it and we're, we just don't talk he about it. He stuffed his finger okay. back uh, in there. This I is clearly blocked goes. it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everything goes. It's very sanitary, we assume. Um, Virgil doesn't use components. He is a sorcerer. His magic is divinely inside of him in some Fan. capacity, some sort of lineage, some sort of trace elements of that of the arcane. So there's not really magic burned up when it's used to create a spell. But there is exhaust release. There is the sweat that is created there is the perspiration of the spirit and the whatever gives him his ability to do the magic that he does is perspired you don't always notice it it's often not in a tight space you're often off out in the, the world where storms happening and it's easy to get kind of confused with the smell of rain from the actual thunderbolt coming out of the sky versus what is actually Virgil's aura. It is weird that there is a smell so similar to that in this cave before you got there, in this oh, mausoleum before you arrived. Hell no. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Smells like your sister. No. Um... <laughs> The RV getting a family tree for Riddle. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, that is not canon. Kent does not say that. I do not want to start something. No, no, no. That well, isn't Kent there. Does all... <laughs> Kent isn't Kent there. Kent is busy. Exactly right. He's I'm, elsewhere. I'm, I'm leaving you all with that. That's right. I'll confirm and, and want to talk about it. Kent, you make your way outside, right? Uh, yeah, you... I mean, just so I can see outside. I don't want to actually leave this room in case you know whatever, but or leave Absolutely. the the underground. But I'll go up the stairs a little ways. Um, and so you head upstairs and you go and you make your way. Uh, and you just kind of see these sort of outcroppings pushing out and see the back of the Malshimber mausoleum. You've mm -hmm. come up on the other side of it near sort of the wall that would be leading out of the city of the dead. You imagine that there might have been some folks who took this way once they'd robbed the city, robbed the actual place. You see like some footprints in the area, but nothing too discernible of just like what else would have been an exit route. Pen stops short and is visibly shocked to find himself still in the city of the dead. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think he's sort of like, well, let's see. So we're near the bat, the, the, a wall of the city. Literally uh -huh. right behind the mausoleum. You are the oh. mausoleum, like what was the entrance that you came in and then went down? You are right behind it. Yeah. And he's so it is smacked up next to the edge of the city of the dead. He's so confused. I think he's just going to do a quick little walk around the mausoleum to make sure that, like, 
it's not just this mausoleum, but like that he's actually, because it's he's so confused. Yeah. Uh, so he'll just do a little loop around and then come back down. And I think just ask, um, show of hands, how many people think that we have left the city of the dead in Waterdeep based on our travels thus far? Great. Uh, and sort of gives the come hither. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I, yeah. Yeah, and I'll, I'll go back up and sort of show you all where we are and be like, I do not understand what is. I thought I was on top of this. I thought we had, and I now I am lost. Well, I mean, I'm not. If, I know where we are. We're in the city of the dead. But well, this seems like the normal for whatever secret passage a mausoleum might have. But what we experienced down there felt more like magic. Like walking to a wall and then like this the the corridors changing around us as we were down there, but this just feels like a standard passage out. Did so we, we go ahead, honey? I was gonna say if we if we go back down this staircase, do we end up in the mausoleum in in that area we just were in? Does anyone want to go check? I'm I'm doing it. I'm yeah. doing it. You go back down. You find a bricked up wall. Where? What? Like right at the end of the stairs? Right at the end of the stairs. Oh, that's not at all what I was expecting. So either. when Kent went up and came back, it didn't. But now it does. Now that no one is in the now mausoleum. Now that no one is in the mausoleum. Mm -hmm. it's, see, it appears. Um, but I mean, you guys could try to smack the brick down, see what's on the other side, if you like try to brute force it. Actually, what I would love to do, Tahani, will you come with me? Because we can, if I use all of my actions to dash, uh, and you're quite fast, why, come with me around to the front, and let's see if we can recreate the path we just did and come back out this door. Yes. Hopefully the zombies won't come back. Yes, because <laughs> otherwise, yeah. otherwise we will have to change our pitch up and smack this brick up. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I was say, do the enemies respawn once you leave the sure, area? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Hey, no one sit at the bonfire. I, that's exactly know. right. I did not sit down. Uh, no one rested. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll, I I do still struggle to keep up with the honey, even if she's not pushing no, at full speed. But like, I can do it. Okay. No, I I match. I, I don't leave you behind. <laughs> Cool. I, I mean, I can do a few rounds of ninety per uh, of of ninety feet per round, but <laughs> you all a double, few. you all double back and you make mm -hmm. your way to the actual uh, stairs leading down. You mm -hmm. go down the stairs and you mm -hmm. arrive back at that same dead end. Mm -hmm. The can't, lanterns have stayed on for you this entire time. They've oh. not really gone off and sort of illuminated their way. But as you enter that back end, turn around, you double back and you go out the front. All right, go back to you all. But we couldn't get back in. I think maybe this this thing's mission has been achieved and is now no longer a thing. Yeah, I agree, but I think I would have phrased it more like the trap that was laid for us has been sprung. Thank you. That's this feels more targeted and intentional. But so to oh, what end? To to what end? It was it was an encounter of no consequence for us. So why bring us here? Maybe well, what sure. if we learn? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, what if it's to see if the rumors are true about the rivals? If we are as good as people think we are. I would or, I would agree with that, except that the Xanathar knows. He watched y'all kill a dragon. What if it's not the Xanathar by himself? That would possibly track, but that would have mean that he's partnered with somebody more powerful again. That does feel like it tracks, to be honest. Mm, who's more powerful than the Xanathar? I just look at Virgil. <laughs> I mean, there's <laughs> Tiamat, there's... Hopefully Mod she's still down there in Avernus. There's <laughs> Who's next? Modiphius. No, I have no idea where that person um, is. <laughs> I, could, I could have the wrong name. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's right, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, we took care of the worm. We took care of Graz. Surely it's not... Surely Omendron would not come crawling back and trying hey, to you never I'm, know i have a question yes mm -hmm. where's duo 
Well, that's yeah. I wanted to know, like, did did duo <laughs> did duo float on with us or? He's still with you guys. You see his eyes closed, still just sort of holding his shirt, sort of pointing. Oh, out oh, is he still drifting? I, we should yeah. follow that. He's not yeah. moving. He doesn't seem he's to be just, moving just other than like, like pointing a... in a direction. Duo. And in that direction is the wall. Sorry. Yeah. 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 In the direction okay. is the wall. Is the, the city wall. Okay. Go ahead, yeah. Virgil. Oh, this. Okay. So that's the city wall. Well, I'd rather so where you are in the city of the dead, it just points out west. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah you know, yeah, west leads. Sorry. Out yeah. To yeah. Yeah. The wall around the. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 Want to be? Do want to do justice, folks? I know. How no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I can't. That, that's I, the no, I, not... I, I, maps are like whatever. They just yeah, yeah, things yeah. people put on paper, whatever. Sure. Um, so, duo, are you feeling? Are you feeling an urge to move in a direction? Because you seem to keep looking in a direction. Uh, I don't know. It just feels. I don't know. Like this feels right to be kind of in this way. Wait, what do you mean in this way? Well, like, I, I so this morning, I was just going off memory of where mm -hmm. I felt my, where I woke up from, right? Mm -hmm. and, and now that I have something of me, of mine that like, you know, I've, I've always had this shirt, like, Ever since y'all know me, I've I've worn this same shirt. You know, I wash it, of course, but this this is my shirt, um, and so yeah, just having it back, it just it just feels right to be holding it this way. Mm. So, when you woke up, your instincts told you to come to Troll Skull, perhaps because you you were either going by routine or you knew you needed our help i just woke now, up and i was like i gotta go home and so okay. i went home so you're you're comfortable moving in this form yeah yeah it's not so bad i mean i gotta i gotta think a little bit more than i'm used to to <laughs> hold on to this this chair but otherwise it's okay and he's still got the sea glass thingy yeah I think no, Tahani uh, oh, pocketed the sea glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and it's gotcha, and like gotcha, truly gotcha, gotcha. tiny, tiny piece of sea glass that was just like kind of like somehow caught in between the fibers of the shirt. Two questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What color is this sea glass? Mm -hmm. I Ooh. feel like that might be important somehow. Oh, that is a good question. I wish I had oh. thought of that. Because I, um, I, well, I, it means something to me, but I don't know if the color will mean something to you. Well, I can't wait to find out now. Right. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, look at it. Give me an investigation. Heck yeah. Yeah. While Dahani's investigating, I've got an out-of-character question. Sure. Do we have any sense that Duo may be cursed? Ooh, I don't think so. I mean, but... How would you go about testing that? I think that, that like, tell me what you're I have removed curse, so if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, you it doesn't. You can try remove <laughs> Absolutely. No, no, it's no, easy no, enough. Sure. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, going to try to remove curse. Yeah. Basically, I, can I actually touch Duo? Because I have to touch. Yeah. You can try. You can, you can stop. Well, I think the, the same way that you would feel with a ghost, the air is different as you pass through his ethereal presence. So if you hover just around it where you just like sort of see it and like feel the coolness of the temperature drop, you could try and putting it there. All right. Cause we can we see Ghost Duo? Yeah. Okay. Especially especially in the moonlight. It's it's, it's a little bit easier. If you were standing right. in a sunbeam, a little harder. Um, I kind of where I think his forehead might be. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know, I, I do my paladin thing. Yeah. Evilness be gone from this creature. You cast remove curse on him. Mm -hmm. I. Nothing happens. He's not okay. cursed well. with anything other than his <laughs> extreme commitment to the understanding <laughs> that he is a ghost. And I don't think that can be removed <laughs> by the spell. I tried. Well, asked an answer. Yeah, that's right. You, you Absolutely. Tried. Now no, we know. That's a good answer. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's impressive. Okay. Uh, Dahani, you got a 19. <laughs> I did. I'm going to... You... It's odd. 
But dang, dude, you recognize this sea glass. You recognize What the heck, the man? color. What have you been up to this past year? Oh boy. What was the one place you went outside of Waterdeep? I went home. You went home to the shores of Schultz. What is And this? Shelton Sea Glass? This is Shelton Sea Glass. What color is it? This is the thing. I, I tell me what color it is, because It's gold. you, it's golden sea glass. So peculiar. The sun hits at the right angle as it heats up the actual sand to make it this particular. It's it's the way that the positioning sits for Shaw on the island. It only Yeah, occurs. it's the minerals in the water and the sand. And the Yeah. perfect angle through which that only Schulte and sea glass can be made this way. It's Schulte. It's a piece of home. How did it get in the back of this cobalt shirt? That is exactly the words that I say to it Yeah. as I am looking at it. I'm like, how did you <laughs> get all the way here? the honey, what's This is um? Chelton sea glass, y'all. Oh, oh, I did not see that thing in your hand and became concerned. <laughs> It no. <laughs> oh, so so then so then I actually I I turn it I turn it a bit so that it catches light and so that you can see it like flicker a little bit. No, this is So okay, how how small is this so that I can be accurate in my Absolutely. It's truly just like larger <laughs> than a few grains of sand. Oh, that's that's It is it is that's tiny. It is like the, the bitty. only way you found it was you hand happened to like catch it as you were move, picking up the shirt when you found it earlier. Okay, so base. Shard might might have been the wrong word for it. A It's true a blip. It's A blipper, a blip. yeah. Yeah, It's a blip. yeah. A splinter. Right? A sp there, a splinter A splinter is. of sea glass. Yeah. So, something from Shaka's past has been in this mausoleum. Something from Virgil's past has been in this mausoleum. Something from Selyse's past has been... You get where I'm going with this? Yeah, Got I it. was upset when I thought one powerful person in Waterdeep was mad at us. Now it's apparently our families and the whole world. Uh, my second question, uh, as I wanted to, uh, that I wanted to ask was like, if I float up just like maybe 30 or so feet, 40, you know what, 40 or 50 feet Hmm. Yeah. and look in the direction that duo is, is um, obsessed with facing, Yeah. what do I see? You, as you stand, rise up into the air. As he's pointing out, it's facing out west for sure, but it's a little actually northwest, pulling you towards Schult if you were to leave off the actual, like the bearing, if you were to take a ship. Oddly, this would be the current that you would then land on that would take you to Schult. Mm -hmm. That's bananas. And I say that like, so his, he's facing out to sea, right? And I know from because like I didn't take a ship, I flew. Mm -hmm. I flew home. So I know that that direction is toward Yeah. what Mm -hmm. It's kind could of that's kind of schulte. Like that's that's the direction. duo I, I come back down. Do he's facing my house, my home, my jolt. Why that way? I don't know, but we should go home because if we're going to Chult, I need to start packing. It is hot down there. I don't think we need to go to Chult. That's I a relief because none of my cold hot weather clothes are clean. <laughs> this is what can I do? Can I take this shirt from you for a second? I'll get Uh, it back. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Of course you will. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't think you would. It hands it over. I take it. holds on a little tight at the end it's like no no Yeah. <laughs> fine <laughs> and actually just literally <laughs> goes through his fingers right right yeah right <laughs> Uh, d does he lose the magnetism of this uh, urge to herbal? Uh, well, you ask him. I mean, he's just, no, I mean, yeah, I guess it, I don't really want to look that. It, it felt nice when I was holding that. It felt like I was being pulled, maybe not pulled, but like called somewhere. If I was trying to get like me, you know, it's just where I'm at. But I'm going to turn this shirt over. Okay. 
Like, does it look uh, like? Is there anything on the other side of it? Like, so it, it, to be fair, this is half a shirt, right? Like, this is this is the guard. What would have been like that? And the inside was branded with it. The mm -hmm. back of it had this little bit of sea glass somehow imparted inside. Maybe he's leading us to the other half of his shirt, or simply connected to where his actual being is. Because the other, based on what the false duo explained to us about the art of the doppel and how it works, duo is somewhere. And yeah. this manifestation of duo clearly is holding on very tightly to some, some core tenets of his identity, but maybe he's trying to get back to his physical form. We could always just follow him. It's worked pretty well so far. Man, y'all are really wise about this. I hand him his shirt back. Yeah, okay. It's nice. It's, it's nice to have. <laughs> it's the security, the security blanket. blanket. The security blanket. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I love it. Um, I, I mean, yes, I think that we should because we'll get more information but every step of this journey so far which granted has been from troll skull to the city of the dead but still mm -hmm. we have been led by duo and that has been what they wanted i don't think we should not continue to be led by our friend i just think we should go with eyes open that they let they have left enough clues for duo to follow that they knew we were going to do this they left the shirt, which summoned the things, the zombies, but the Xanathar had to know those wouldn't be a real challenge to us. Mm -hmm. And so right. the shirt was left for a reason. Well. Hmm. I mean, we should still do it. Oh, what yeah. Else, oh, what else absolutely. We got? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a I have another question. So by that, by that, this is gonna be wild. By that logic, if they knew that we were gonna that we were gonna follow duo here and that this wasn't gonna be much of a challenge mm -hmm. and that we're probably gonna continue to follow duo, should we continue to be eyes open or should we only pretend to be eyes open and be like, oh, this is completely like it's, I told you it's wild. Just mm -hmm. be be completely oblivious about the fact that this is this is nothing. We're just following duo for the sake of following. It's a oh, that's fun little mystery. Mm -hmm. It's a fun I'm, little mystery, and nothing bad is going to happen. To us. I I don't know why we can't do both. We are very concerned for our friend, yeah. and <laughs> we are concerned for our friend's safety. And if anyone thought that we had any other primary motive, well, that would be their fault, not ours. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. You said to the northwest is sort of where he's pointed? Yeah, it's sort of a directing. It's not immediately out to sea, but that's kind of the direction that it's taking you. I mean, so for what it's for what it's worth, as Kent sort of like, we've been in Waterdeep several years now. So, you know, I sort of put the interactive map in my mind and mm -hmm. sort of trace a line. You know, since we're connecting dots these days, the currents to Chult may not be the only things to the Northwest. The Troll Gate, which has been seeing some trouble lately, is also in the Northwest corner of the city. Hey, you're right. So I think maybe it's worth at least heading in the direction, right? We don't need to go to Chult. We don't need to get on a ship no. and take the current or whatever. But mm -hmm. I, think we sh I think you're right. I think we should follow where Duo is pointed now, see where that leads to in the city, if it's nothing, we go home, we regroup, we figure out what's next. We go back and get our ship that's hidden in the woods several miles from here, completely safe, and I'm sure nothing bad has happened to it, and head to Jolt. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think step one is, let's go see if this leads to something here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask, do you always want to go in this moment? It's still the middle of the night. So if you guys want to make your way sort of out. Well, I guess it's. Now it's been the same day, right? You had your meeting earlier. Yeah. You came home. You saw Duo. He led you out here. It's now close to like eleven midnight. 
you guys spend some time sort of ruffering through and then a very action past six seconds uh, and making your way sort of out <laughs> into the space. Uh, if you guys want to keep continuing, like if this is the night where you guys keep going, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make you all take exhaustion. I'm not going to have like you all experience anything like that. I just want to know where y'all are at if you want to just keep moving. I mean, there's a sense of urgency to it all, but the truth is it's been going on for a while. I don't know that going home to sleep for eight hours and then leaving first thing in the morning is the worst thing we could do just to be a little more prepared and and rested and supplied. I'm also but also like about our guests. Oh, Lord mercy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they I were don't... there all that time and we didn't even know they were doppelgangers. Right. So you could say, I mean, on your way out, you could send a message to Brian at the actual like just a check-in sort of situation no if you, you know what? Um, we, we should, should also route. we could but we should also we should leave a note for in case guys are cut like we we left assuming this was a day trip and if we uh, start going more places i worry about people listen we're all a little on edge with the doppels so i think i think maybe i think i vote we should go back to troll skull get our things in order take a rest let brian and our guests, and maybe leave a note for Gosric, know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Sure. That's my, uh, I, I'm not I opposed mean, to going now if we feel strongly, but that's my vote. <clears throat> I think if anyone, if anyone is watching and observing to see what we do, it would look more normal. Since Duo was able to come to Troll Skull, it would look more normal if we at least, given the hour, went home to rest. Yeah. That would be acting less suspicious, I think. Yes, that's a good point. Don't All right. be suspicious. Don't be Don't suspicious. suspicious. <laughs> we gotta go going home. Back okay, to let's go home. Yeah, yeah, let's you guys go home. Go, sorry, sorry, sorry. You guys go <laughs> no, back it's to okay. We were home. laughing about our, at ourselves. No, 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 it's no perfect. <laughs> and you all make your way uh, back to Troll School, and we're just going to do a time jump. You guys right, love that. Uh, woke up the next day, you left your note. What was included in the note, just so I'm aware? Oh, nothing specific, I don't think. Cool. Uh, just, uh, we're going out, we shouldn't be, let's see. How uh, hey, Dahani, how long does it take to get to Chult? Should, I mean, worst case scenario, we're heading out of town today, right? If we get, like, taken or something. Mm -hmm. How long does it take to get down there? Couple days? Okay, so, you know, we shouldn't be gone more than... A week? A ten, yeah, I was gonna say a ten day. <laughs> oh, the old Julian a Gregorian. Ten day. Yeah, ten day. Gregorian ten, ten day. Ten day. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, but I think that's. I don't think any details otherwise, because I still don't know who to trust. For sure. And so you sort of leave this note for Brian. He says, "Okay, great. Um, once again, just to let you know, your double duo did a great job, sort of managing the things yesterday. The other Gotta stop folks... complimenting him. No, Astral I mean, duo is gonna he's... feel very bad. No, I, like <laughs> a guy comes in and like, no man, if he's impersonating me, he's doing he's doing me justice. Oh, great, like, okay, like, it's not bad. If so, and the other guy comes so... in and is like, yeah, you know, I've been trying, keeping up with it. Uh, but uh, the other the other doppels and I, you know, we're still just so you know. Making up payments. We're on top of things. The books seem to add up. Brian's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're ship shape in terms oh. of penance. Uh, yeah, and I, I guess I we should say because we don't know how long we're going to be gone. I don't. I think we can lift the the please don't leave the property rule. <laughs> oh, good. Some of the other folks were getting a little worried. Um, they, I mean, we we understandably were like, hey, I got to get to work to pay my thing here. So I like. It was a like work thing and coming back and then sort of doing that. But if someone wants to go to a day trip or something, we would like to have that freedom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Again, you're so not, you many, were never our so prisoners. Many questions now, but okay. As <laughs> do I, that I, we just don't have time for it. Because uh, <laughs> they're extensive. Right. Uh, yeah, that's fine. You were never our prisoners. We just wanted to make sure that things, you know, were kept a little bit under control, but I don't know how long we're going to be gone. And again, not our prisoners. No, no, no I appreciate it. And be honest, you know, it, it's been nice. And he kind of shifts into his uh, doppel form. It's been nice to have a place where we can just kind of be. Uh, it, it's some of the other tenants now know the situation, you know, and, and they're not freaking out because they've been here for a little bit. So that's been cool. Yeah, it's uh, it's been not bad. I, I'm I don't worry. I don't interact with new yeah, guests like you. this. But, Thank you. Uh, 
it is I, nice to have a place to let it off a little bit. Virgil kind of leans into doppel duo, fake duo, duo number two. I feel like mm -hmm. we're going to get two duos at the end of this, which is fine yeah. with me. We have yeah. one, it's okay. You're doing a really good job at being duo. Do you have any feel or connection for where his body is? Oh. Oh. I don't understand how that works, and perhaps yeah. you can explain it to me. No, 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 no. It's a good question. Um, the art of the doppel is complex, and it is something that, you know, I'm I'm not a grandmaster in a lot of ways. I can't do it as fast as other people can, but I am did have and will spend my life getting better at it. <laughs> what I do know is that I can... The pod is still active. The pod is still there because I still have access to the memories and stuff. Um, I mean, what was that guy's name? Larn? Larn? Uh, the one that I... I... Well, I gave him the pod and he was happy with that. He said he wasn't going to like really mess with it because this is like a thing that I needed to be undercover for. But I, I haven't seen him in like a month. So I, I kind of just let the job ride. So when you so when a doppelganger is replicating a host. Yeah. Do they have no sense of where um, unless it's someplace you left it? You right, right, right. right. I, obviously, obviously where... I like on a map where originally, but uh, I mean, I know it's still active because I still have access to their memories. So, like, your friend is safe wherever he, his his corporeal presence how, is. How how far would he have to be before you start losing that connection? Oh, uh, I <laughs> I don't think I can. I think it's, a, I mean, I made the pot, and so it's it's like, it's a magic that is strong enough to, imitation is the highest form of flattery, right? And and the, the necessary moment of when you see someone do something really good, sometimes you never forget it. Um, with the art of the doppel, there's a way in which you, you never forget what was the source. And for the source, we just make a memento. Uh, the pod, the container. All right, we're we're simply concerned about our friend. Sure, 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 sure. If we could perhaps return his essence to his body. No, no, no. I I would say this: as long as he is in essence, he's safe. It means no one's bothering, no one's trying to mess with him, no one's looking at the actual thing. If that thing ever like flickers out or something, if it if it ever goes away, maybe that like that the other one might wake up or, or I, I'm if I was to guess why his mind is separate from his body the way it is, I would assume with the art of the doppel, the moment that that snaps, he would snap back in it. Because that's usually what happens, right? Has anyone? I, I feel like. You, someone someone here has been doppled, right? Like you all just, you you woke up in the pod when the other touchy, one died. Touchy subject, touchy uh, subject. Yeah, not, that's not, maybe uh, not. No, we're, no, sure, sure, no. sure, sure. We're not there yet. We will get there with time. We're not there yet. I, don't count your chickens. Yeah, I wouldn't. Mm -mm. Thanks, though. You're welcome. Anyway. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, just back in a duo and sort of goes about, it. yeah, you know, going like it goes back. All right, Leaf, we got some orders coming in upstairs. Uh, love it. <laughs> and sort of um, shifts around. And you all make your way. Uh, you've left your note with Brian and you all uh -huh. make your way up into the field ward, sort of cutting across. Um, it is what you guys remember of the field ward. You know, it, it's got a, a lot of community, it's got a lot of like actual people living in it in a real deep mm -hmm. way. Um, it is one of the less uh, supported parts sure. of Waterdeep. Mm -hmm. um, there is just a lack of basic infrastructure in the design. The there aren't um, heck. <laughs> they have actual lamp lighters here. You know that's someone's job to light the lamps, as opposed to like the magically controlled gas powered lamps that exist in the rest of water they haven't oh, gotten the that continual sort of flames right, 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 right. Yeah. there's not that sort of support in the field ward yet wow i mean to be fair it is also not 
an official part of Waterdeep, right. though it is. Right. The city itself did not establish the walls around the field where those were makeshift over time and sort of protection for folks who do to, uh, sorry, uh, because of a refugee situation, not due to, um, moved their way into a positioning where they are now and um, have built themselves and their community as a part of the city, even though it's not. And within that, as you guys are going through, you see a lot of people just sort of existing. Some people notice you like some of the citizens can tell that you're not from the area <laughs> uh i think one of them you remember kent very briefly of working Ooh. together and like you see him like like grab his side and like wince as he like ducks around a corner really fast i just push uh, everybody a little bit faster right, down the right. road <laughs> <laughs> and i think this is great kent you like and we're walking have and done walking. work in the field world yeah. Over the past year, not only just as a mercenary, there were some other endeavors that you got involved in. Some, I believe there was a, a historic, you were trying to um, yeah. do a little like a sociological understanding. Yeah, after the, my after yeah. my moment at the museum sort of fell apart when I kept right. correcting the plaques of all of the artifacts. Right. Uh, I you just were decided. Right. You weren't I, wrong. Yeah. Tell that to the docent at the museum. It doesn't matter. Um <laughs> I decided to do some of my own research so that no one could tell me to stop correcting incorrect things. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I came to the field ward to to do a little bit of uh, of research about like the city's history and how it was integrated into the city officially and unofficially. Um, yeah, that. For sure. And in this time, I think this is a great moment. You're sort of taking your space through and you learn quite a bit about the field ward and like particularly the effects of the spell plague and how it ravaged people mm -hmm. from not only this plane but others and mm -hmm. how Waterdeep was one of the quick ones to sort of get things under control. They were able to handle their uh, statues and sort of were able to create a space. And afterwards, the story of Waterdeep particularly compelled people to come here. There's an interaction you have with... Um, one of the citizens, uh, you know, is a middle-aged uh, elf who's been here for a while, and he says, "Yeah, you know, from my plane, it was much nicer. It was a very calm, quaint existence, and then the spell plague happened and uh, thrust asunder onto this Faerun, you know. And mm -hmm. I heard, I heard the words of Waterdeep. I heard that seems to have opportunity and uh, the ability to progress." And I decided to come on over. So like I've been here. Guy. Yeah, I've been <laughs> here for a while. It's been a little tougher than I originally thought, but uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm back in my old place. I uh, I don't think they have a word for it here, but I was um. So which which called is a Sir John. Oh no. Mm hmm. Uh, I think this is why this job didn't work out either for Kent, because he completely lost track of his anthropological research of the field ward and suddenly yeah. became fascinated about this plane that this person came from sure, and sure. just totally lost track, uh, lost his funding because he hadn't turned in any notes on the actual research in a long time. And yeah. I don't know why he had outside funding. We are mm -hmm. so rich, but it's fine. Uh <laughs> And Derek McFarley was an interesting subject. You know, you got a lot yeah. of information from him. Um, Derek McFarley makes me yeah, want to yeah. cry, but all right. <laughs> just an interesting character. Just a wild, how, what plane was he that he arrived that the elf just yeah. existed? Yeah. Uh, you know, it was a Sir John for a while. It was a difficult medical uh, profession. I don't think you all do that here. You just kind of lay on hands. Um, and it is, uh, well, some of us. <laughs> right. And uh, uh, you, huh? you see Derek along the path as you come back and uh, you see him. He's got his little stall set up. He's uh, sort of flipping some flat cakes on the on the oil, just sort of making options. And he says, oh, oh Kent, good to see you, bud. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, all right. Uh, what? Derek. Derek. <laughs> okay, sure. Derek. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, actually. Uh, Derek, come here for a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, what's up? Rivals, Derek, Derek, Rivals. Long story, tell you later. Do you recognize this kobold? And I'll point to to Astral Duo, Duo 2.0, Duo whatever. Oh. No. I uh, do not recognize mm. this ghost. 
Oh, uh, well, you just made a friend for calling him that, but, um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, all right. Uh, thanks. How you been? Sorry. Uh, we're sort of in the middle of a thing, but you know, you all right? No, I've been doing great. I really, honestly, I want to thank you. Our conversation was real enlightening for me at a moment where I was dwelling in the past quite a bit about what could and could not be when I was a Sir John. So I ended up uh, changing uh, things a little bit here and decided to do something new. And voila, Derek McFarley's hotcakes. And we've been selling. Let me tell you what. Selling like what? Like cakes that are warm because uh-huh. these are moving. <laughs> um, that's that's great. I, yeah. It's a shame that I, I got one other uh, friend who's not here right now, but I'm sure he would be delighted to to talk food with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I know this is a broad and potentially loaded question. Us being currently in the field ward, but um, anything weird lately? Ooh, I mean. It yeah, is, I know. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, I get it. I, mean, I, I do. <laughs> let me let me tell you what. But getting it, I've had a little more information now that I've been setting up the stall. Uh, we've got pretty good insight of what's coming and going. And frankly, the, the field ward's been taking care of itself. Yeah, I'm glad lot, to hear that. Listen, because we've been trying to. The ma- I have heard through the grapevine that the masked lords are. Ch- you know what? It doesn't matter. Go oh, on, Derek. Yeah, the masked lords. The yeah. masked lords. They send some hawk winter guys down here, do something for a week, and then they're out of here. Let me tell you what. <laughs> I these dudes have taken their own justice in their hands. Their folks just going missing. They're just disappearing straight out of the city, straight out of the field ward, and no one was doing anything about it. We complained to the city guard. We complained to the city watch. No one did a thing. And then some gentlemen's got themselves together. I don't know how they got their hands on it, but they, oh, they have been blocking any folks coming in and out of this house. They really shut down that troll gate so efficiently, and we haven't lost a single person. Sorry, who was it that shut down the troll gate? I don't know their names. They're just, they're a ragtag group of people from the war. They've sort of positioned themselves as they have, but uh, they, they attack from the sky, and they really do a good job. They attack what? Attack whom? What? Well, the guards, the folks who originally sort of were running the troll gate, the people who were allowing the ships to come in and out, they stopped them. They did an aerial assault, prevented them from getting through. Got it. Mm-hmm. Um, do they have they given themselves a name or a moniker or a Oh no! And they I call don't, themselves. No, 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 no. I think they're too cool to like kind of brand themselves. I think I don't. I don't think that they've done that. You know, it's folks- rare that a group of people f- realize that naming yourself is uncool. Anyway, go on, Derek. No, no, no. You know, trust me. I get it. Back where I'm from, you got to get in front of it. Otherwise, you get a weird name like these guys, the Field Ward Guardians. People call them FWG. I don't. I don't like it. It's a. It's. It's. It's a ah. lot. So they attack from the sky? Do they fly on griffins or? You know, I, it hasn't fly. really been, I don't really know because I don't really kind of stay in that area. This is where my stall's at. This is where I hang. Um, but from what I've been told, they just kind of like in and out. There's a moment where folks are trying to make their shipment in and then the next there's rubble on the road. Well, we're certainly heading the right direction. Yeah. Hey, I would like to make a history check. About the FWGs. About, about the FWGs. <laughs> Absolutely. Specific, specifically, I don't know. Have we not if, heard about the F I mean, yeah, have we have we as mass lords, those 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 Yahoos not heard of the think? FWG? And I want to roll an insight check. Go for it. Give me an insight check. And I have that was an eighteen uh history check for me. Perfect. Seventeen insight. So for your insight and your history as you're going through it, you realize that FWGs, you don't know about them. They are a new term, probably because the mass lords don't know about them. What you've gathered from Derek here is that this information really is on the sort of like situation that it, if you're not in the field ward, if you don't live here, how else would you be aware of what's going on? The folks probably at the city watch and city guard are too embarrassed to say that they're getting sort of like, pummeled like this to let goods in and out so they're 
calling it riffraff, so ne'er dwells, folks who are pinching off goods here and there. That's going to go bad real quick when they finally decide to tell but the full story. Yeah. The reason I ask about this history check is yeah. does it sound like mm. diversion tactics or formations that we did in Chult? Ooh. Ooh. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Okay. I, do, I don't know if you know enough from this moment to be aware of it in that mm -hmm. capacity. But there is something, I mean, aerial combat is not known to the field wards. It's not really something that these denizens are uh, aware of. Right, but if, in Waterdeep, if you're not a griffin rider, mm -hmm. then there's not a lot happening in the, like, there's not a lot happening in the sky if you're not a griffin rider. Sure, 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 absolutely. So that kind of, it kind of keeps Dahani's head on a swivel. Yeah. I think that's uh, worthwhile. And like, there is something that's illuminating about it because there is some competency in this idea of aerial combat. Um, and that is not something, like you said, if it's a Griffin Rider, it's something, but they haven't described what people are flying in on or what they're using. They mm -hmm. just that they are coming from the sky. Hmm. Uh, the right. way people describe it is it just happens pretty fast. You know, I, I don't really know. There's just a shadow and then... Next 12 seconds apiece, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's really uh, quick. It's like you yeah. blink for six seconds and it's over. <laughs> it's a very long blink, Derek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Some of us are used... Hey, back where I'm from when I was a surgeon. Uh, let me just tell you a story. little bit of... <laughs> all right, Derek, you've been very helpful. Mm. Uh, it's good to see you. I'm glad you're doing all right. And, yeah. you know... Uh, uh, is Derek's cart like mobile? Uh, no, it's sort of like okay. situated. It's a stall. It's, it's a uh, actual like, like where it's at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I'll have to come back and try. I'm sorry we can't stop right now, but I'll we'll come back and try. No, and oh, it. oh, oh, there's a light. I gotta go. We're get out of here. So get out of here. I gotta get back to these hot kicks. And How fast are they? All right, get out of here. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> And as you all make your way through the rest of the field ward, sort of pushing your way along to the troll gate, um, you sort of see what they've sort of been mentioning. There is, as you get closer, some actual, like, I don't know how to describe it, like truly, uh, it was as if there was some sort of, there's a giant, um, what do you call that thing? A uh, cross bolt that's like sitting in the oh, ground. Like a ballista? Oh, like a ballista? A ballista bolt. Yes, thank you. That thing it is like sort of shot into the area. There's like actual uh, crevices, sort of like little like holes made from whatever shell shock arrived from that sort of position. And it, hmm. it's kind of scarred, but there's markings. FWG, FWG, people have put up in the space. It's the actual the guard better. tower itself is gone now, like in terms of like inhabitants there is no one actually in the troll fort itself Ooh, that's hmm. as you guys arrive at the troll yard you see sort of this in the court area the troll tower the way that it was actually uh sort of locked in is now just piled and piled and piled with carts and other bits of like things that have tried to move in that have now just made a barricade leading directly into the city. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm trying very hard not to sing Les Mis right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, interesting. Mm -hmm. So it's basically like a it's like a lame slap meets the warriors type situation where it's just a big old barricade and like FWG graffiti all over the place. Absolutely, absolutely. Someone's clinking bottles in the corner. You worry about that for a moment. Um, and then things are okay though, as you're sort of situated in the space. Uh does anyone um while you're sitting here? And do you want to take a perception check? Do you want to sort of look Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. like, if there are people around, particularly. Sure. Oh, God, I always forget how bad I am at perception. That's a 20. Thank oh, God. Oh, not so 20. Nice. 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 Incredible. No, no, no. You guys do a really good job as you sort of arrive. And one for... So he's 18. Yes, yeah. Please. 15 plus all around. You guys totally succeed on this. Um, there are folks 
peering through some shutters that are closing and like there have been there were eyes on you and now there are none it is quiet mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. too you, quiet you oh. watch as duo sort of holding the shirt is drifting towards the actual gate which itself is unobstructed the actual gate leading out to the city is not blocked by anything nothing is sort of in its sort of way so if you guys wanted to go through there you could <laughs> can we like uh, i said the troll, the troll fort itself looks deserted you the keep actual... saying looks look yeah. well, no one's gone inside if no you one's... say seems if you yeah. say appears absolutely if you say, look okay <laughs> when would i betray you like this <laughs> uh, wait hold on specifically betray hold on uh, what? That was an odd word choice to use never yeah. never mm. never 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 um <laughs> what is it uh, where's duo with the shirt pointing He's pointing at the actual gate itself. Oh, he seems to be sort of pulling sake. that way. <laughs> but I mean, it's you all. You could try and fly up and over it as to honey. Like no one has to walk through it. You could. This is not something that you need to open if you want to just get to the other side of. If you even want to go to the other side, this is just mm. where y'all are. In for a copper, in for a gold, and that does appear to be the way we're going. You want me to? I mean, they know we're, if there's anybody here, they know that we're here. But if we were to disappear, they will not know where we end up. So would you like me to enact that little scenario? Oh. I mean, I don't have a better idea. You're going to vanish us? Uh, just me. Okay. <laughs> I was like, but was like, awesome. it, no, no. I mean, I, I wish that I could, but it's just me. I. I feel like that would be good surveillance. Yeah. And I'm way too slow in my ghost form to be of any use, so go for it. Hey, I can do this for up to four minutes. I'm going to go invisible, and I'm uh, going to scope out the tower and the gate. Absolutely. Uh, Dahani drops active camo and become a shimmering reflection (laughs) of light around them. And if they stand perfectly still, you can't actually. (laughs) But as they move very quickly, they're they're sort of cutting in. Um, Give me a stealth check just so I know what you're doing. Can I have advantage on that, please? Absolutely. You have you've got active camo. We talked about. Yeah. 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 I'm invisible. You're invisible. 23. 23. Easy, easy. You go through and you are so fast and so silent. Honestly, it's like a breeze as you like fly down these halls as you're going through this. There is there's a corpse or two around. Um, there is unfortunate. They seem to be wearing guard uniforms of the city watch in some capacity. Uh, it appears that this place was deserted in a hurry. That mm-hmm. when it like it is, it seems a deserted, and it is in terms of anyone that's like in the actual space itself. Okay, quick but question. Your, uh, yeah. A quick question about the corpses. Sure. Do the guard uniforms look like they fit? Yeah, the guard uniforms look like they fit. They are riddled in some capacity with appears to be some sort of like puncture wounds of some kind. There is a little bit of fraying from what you would imagine might be a blast of some sort of magic on some individuals. But, if I, I mean, fit my hand to some of these puncture wounds, does it look familiar? Like Dahani is so on edge about aerial aerial attacks. Yeah. Like, do these look like Aarakocra claws or talons? You're looking, and it's hard to tell. Some of them are, like, riddled mm-hmm. with some large sort of punctures. Some of them seem to be arrows. There doesn't okay. seem to be that direct of contact with these bodies, mm-hmm. which is confusing in a lot of ways. Cool. Yeah, she'll continue to make her way through. Like I said, I've got enough key points to do this for up to four minutes. Right. Uh, do you, Are you burning all your key points to do this for four minutes? Um... I'm going to ask you, is it going to take me four minutes to get through all this? I don't think so. I really I really think it honestly might even take you two, because this is going up and down some floors really quick. You're sort of zooming throughout, um, given what D&D is. I think, honestly, I'll say you get it in one. Uh, because okay. you rolled so good on your stealth, you got a 23. Um, okay. Keep your key points. Uh, and yeah, so you go through, you sort of see it. You What do you report back to the group? Um. 
exactly what I've seen. Uh, mm -hmm. It appears mostly deserted. There are corpses of what look to be actual guards, mm -hmm. some who have been riddled with puncture wounds of various kinds. Um, did I notice anything else? Just that it seems to be deserted in a hurry? It seemed, uh, from what you seem, people were making an active retreat after whatever happened here happened. Okay. They weren't prepared for whatever assault sort of landed, uh, was thrust upon them. Okay. So I think you all actually begin to hear the results of my search before I stop being invisible. I'd probably shock one of you. <laughs> Love that. Uh, I mean... <clears throat> The problem is we don't, like, currently, they are serving the field ward, mm -hmm. which I'm fine with. Mm -hmm. but we don't know where they came from or how they're connected to everything else we're investigating. Or where they've gone. Uh, well, I think if we go through yeah. this gate, we will find out very quickly. Is this an us situation? Like, they serve the field ward... Even if their methods are a little questionable. I mean, I, no, I mean, you all are the mass lords. I, I, I don't know. You all duo. 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 Oh, guys, it's just us. It's just us. It's never just us, even when it's just us. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. It's all right. I, I thought you that. Yeah. Anyway, oh, I swam. Oh, Gosrick yeah. left his mask out one time. Yeah. Oh, who do you think runs the meetings when all seven of you just mysteriously disappear? I and then really don't like yeah. the sound of that. Okay. Um, no, I I agree that they're simply protecting their own, but it's really not going to look good for the actual authorities of the city. My first concern still, yes. My first concern still, though, is everything else. Duo, the City of the Dead. So I think we just need to go through this gate. And if we get, cautiously, and if we get accosted by, what is it, uh, WFG? Uh, FWG. FWG, there we go, Field Ward, right. Uh, I think we just make clear to them that, like, <laughs> we are not here for them at this moment how how does the gate work is it just like do we just have to like go do we have to unblock it to go through it or do we go over like how does it really it... there's like just a simple from the way it's designed on this end there's a bar on the inside of it that you just have to lift and move over and then you can kind of pull it back how heavy is that bar look hmm i think it's a what i I'm like, does it take effort, or is it like yeah, yeah, well yeah, yeah. Okay, This okay, is okay. this is like an athletics ten. Okay, if a DC, okay. if you so one my person to do servant it. is not going to do it. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice try. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Two people, DC five. Yeah, one yeah, person, yeah, yeah. DC ten athletics. Sure, sure. I'll go for that. <laughs> my luck has run out. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> oh no! Oh, this is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll I'll come help you with it. You and I. Are... Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. What? Yeah, as, yeah, as they do. Wait, the if, verbal... if, if you're helping me, I will roll with advantage. How does that sound? I think that. Yeah. I think, and I'll let that eight go because I said it was five. If the yeah. two, two people do it, it's negligible. Uh, you That's all fine. are adventurers. You lift it up and set it down. Uh, and then you guys, I imagine, push the yeah. door. Sort of walk yeah, through. I mean, That's we just need to do it. Moment. Yeah. yeah. Cool. You lift the bar up, you push the door through, and you start walking your way across. And you see a little bit more of the carnage from the other side, the sort of decimation and like the actual word. parts that are like sort of strung about the what was left over in the inside, the barricade that was made were the ones that were able to try to like rush through and get in. But mm. whatever did this had truly a, a height advantage, something that allowed them to just flit or, or fly above in just a strong capacity. Everyone, anyone give me a perception check. Yeah. Oh, okay. Afraid. Ah, uh, 21. Oh, Amazing. incredible, incredible. Honestly, Solis, every, yes, Solis 20, 22. Ooh. All right. Yeah. These Natural are good 20. rolls. And this is a good one as well. And oh, is that a nat 20 from Solis? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
So at least Heck yeah. you're in this moment and you see this and you hear it before everyone else. It sounds a thrumming in the air, a thrusting from the sky. And before you know it, a zoop and a zap there is above Where happened you. to the zap? The zap, it, it, you see a zap as a ballista okay. bolt fires right okay. in front of you all. Thank you. Yes. And oh. you see the damsel fly pointed at you. There's oh, being not, yeah, I was, I, looking what? at you all. Brian, Brian knew this was coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, um, um, and you hear a voice from above. The troll gate is not operational. Please return to the city. Return our ship. Return That's exactly our ship. what I was going to say. <laughs> Where, how, far, how, far, how far up is it? It, this is it's up in the air it's probably like 200 250 feet up okay. from where you all are uh-huh yeah virgil immediately starts flying towards the ship same no stay away stay no away. Wait, this is our <laughs> ship wait virgil oh, no 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 open coming out guys what are you doing here it's walter Waltair, get out of that ship right now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no. No, no that is our ship. Okay. We brought it back. I didn't, I didn't know it was yours. I didn't know it was yours. Now okay? you do. I was doing, the Lancasters, they were doing some work, and, 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 and I heard the field work needed help, and so I kind of I, I did some freelance work on my side. I was trying to help people, and I found this ship. It was just abandoned. No, and the it ship wasn't. Was like, I asked it if it wanted to help, if it was doing anything, and the ship was... Ship, talk to him. I was doing nothing mm. in what? the in the woods for a year. Compl I'm sentient. I just I just went. That's our just fault. Wanted me to wait. That, that yeah, no, that's fault. on us. That's on us. Yeah, that's on us. That's fair enough. Did that's, you just no, run I, off with any random person that no, comes up to you? No, I did It wasn't any random. I trusted this individual. It seemed that they had a good idea, mm. and I and frankly, using some of my artillery functions felt nice after just being left in the woods. Honestly, this could have got this could have been so much worse. So I'm gonna take the win, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I, what? Put it down, Walter, okay. please. Just, just, we'll go. Wow. We'll meet guys, you, guys. You make it seem like I tell the ship what to do. The ship just <laughs> does what it does, oh, and I'm here. Now we remember. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, what was her name? Rival. 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 Yeah, Virgil, well, you Virgil just... and Dahani have continued. Oh, that yeah. makes a lot of sense now, Walter. says so I, I I never put that together, and now I get it. Yeah, we we've continued going towards the going towards the damselfly. So yeah, I'm just on the ground because I can't fly. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Um, I don't need to go up there. I'm just yeah, up down with Celise yelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see the, the, I do love the damselfly. Yeah, begins to sort of sound. Oh, like I had my bow out just in case. <laughs> the thrumming sort of settles as it sort of pulls down and lands. Walter comes out, he's like, yeah, guys, oh man, are you guys joining the FWGs? I, for the record, I didn't come up with the name. They did, and it, and, and it stuck, and it ran, and so I was like, okay. Walter. Yeah. Are you aware that you have killed several city guards? Oh yeah, those bozos, absolutely. Walter. Walter. Are you Buddy. what? Buddy, what's wrong Wait, with you? You, guys, you guys leave a, 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 a true slew of corpses behind you when you guys do your work. But they're people. I, people. That oh, Again, actually, this guys. is really actually yeah. That's yeah. Mm, okay, I don't. That's, I okay, can't. Yeah, all right. Yeah. The field ward was having its citizens removed. Someone is picking them off. All right, and leaving them alone. And hey. When I didn't have anywhere to stay before I was in the Lancaster's employee, I lived in the field ward, okay? I, this is my home. This is where everyone new comes to stay before they can get it themselves a, a manor to live in. So I, I did something about it. And with Rival's help, with I, I, thank you. I see you did nothing. It was oh. mainly me. Sounds like us, and I Doesn't don't say, like that feels it. targeted, and yeah. I'm really not here for it. Okay. Uh, I... Okay. We don't agree. Sorry, we, we don't disagree with helping people. Nope. We disagree with your method. Yes. Because, okay. not all, now listen, you are absolutely right. We have only about a third of a leg to stand on about the killing thing. Sure. However, the yeah. problem is that when 
the authorities in the city find out what's actually going on here, they're going to come down on the ward. And we will do... Some contingent of the masked lords will likely try to oppose that, but this is bad, Walter. What? We will handle them. Rival and I will yeah. defend the war. I'm for sorry. Long. Rival is ours, and <laughs> okay. you have been relieved of any semblance of, of control commands. you might yes. have had. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, get off my ship. I'm sorry. I, I am no one's. I don't know that I've ever rival. seen this work done. I, I rival. am That's, well, my rival. own entity. Fair and enough. And I mm. chose to engage with Walter because the opportunity presented itself. And I chose to do it. If I choose to slay some of these negligible people who were letting these things go. Whoa. <laughs> Hold on. I, here. All right, everything I, I just I said to Walter not, goes for you too, Rival. What? Right. I, I do not have mm. the time to discuss the morality of your actions. Mm -hmm. I simply can only say that what you're doing is wrong. Why? Okay, we'll get blunted bolts. All right, we'll use non lethal rounds or something. But I. Uh, hold on. A non lethal round. From 250 feet in the a air? Feels not, fairly that's, lethal. That's, that's still it's still lethal. lethal. You yeah. know what's great? I hear a lot of suggestions coming from this side of the ship and nothing but naysaying coming from that side. <laughs> Was that Rival or Walter? Like, we're we're, we're yeah, okay. arguing with the ship right okay. now. <laughs> like... um, okay, okay. All right. Let's all take a deep breath because okay. this is important, but also not really why we're here. So we have... Oh, I don't even know where to start. Okay, <laughs> things that we hike off. Oh. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Duo, <laughs> hold the shirt. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me let me just hold it up. What happens? He, he holds it up. Walter looks at it and says, "Oh, interesting." Oh no, I just want to know if Duo is still pulled. Yeah, in any I mean, Duo, uh, for the record, Duo has been moving in the direction that feels okay, right, and it is pointed in that way so still like still straight out of the troll gate in that direction for yeah okay it's weird okay. actually thank you for saying that you watch it pull and anyone have a spyglass everyone got well i'm gonna let that I nat mean, 20 you from, must virtual i gotta let, yeah. I, gotta let that virtual nat, I will say i'm gonna also let that nat 20 ride and thank as you. you look out in the direction you see something glinting on the horizon there's a ship sailing right off into the distance. And it yep, seems to be that. directly where Duo is pointing. Horizon um, heading away or toward? Heading out. Okay. Yeah. A regular ship. It seems to be a regular yeah, ship. It's a good <laughs> question. It's a good yeah, question, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, all right, that's number one. Number two, do you, okay, so we can, we can and will talk about the city guard stuff or city watch, I don't remember which one they were, later. Honestly, I don't know the difference between them either. It's, it's it's real confusing, and mm -hmm. I want to send a petition to the Mass Lords to sort it out one day. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else have you all been doing out here? Protecting the field ward from whom? Well, I mean, there have been a lot of ships kind of coming in and out, and Walter mentioned the situation to me of how people were going missing, and so we did a little reconnaissance, ship. and we saw that uh, some of these ships were heading out for a while, and Okay. There were people on board, and actually, Rival looks at, uh, you see them, like, you showed them the script, the t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Sure. Some of the ships had flags with uh -huh. that mark on That's what I was going to ask. Uh -huh. Coming from which direction? It was just, like, well, out? They, they would arrive, they'd dock, and then they would just go. They wouldn't go into the city, they would just wait here, and then as things left the troll gate they would load up and sort of leave okay and you've been stopping that exodus from the troll gate so these ships have not been able to be loaded since you began absolutely well i mean we did what we could and well you sure, sure. Our, you see over there like the the wreckage the the blocking of the actual inside of people getting out and one of the piers is completely demolished one of the for closer heavens. ones for the actual nearby <laughs> is just like wreckage and it's sitting in the water there and so yeah i mean we couldn't get the one that was further out but it felt like a lesson if anyone was trying to get close you know we had our situation sort of taken care of and rival was pretty good at picking up the ideas of aerial combat i just explained a little bit of like the basic schulte and strategy 
of like how to do that. <laughs> it's a real shame we didn't just use Rival on Prince Andrews's palace. <laughs> right. <laughs> um okay. I mean Yeah, we didn't have Rival yet. No, you didn't have Rival yet. Oh, we yeah. could have just we were leaving. Oh, as we were leaving. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> That would have been awesome. No, okay. Um, <laughs> um, all right. I mean, I think oh, we should. Yeah. Yeah. This is why we left the note saying a few days just in case. Rival. Mm -hmm. I am sorry that we left you here. The moment we returned home, it got difficult and it's. It's been a very difficult year, so I do apologize for us leaving you here. Would you be willing to help us once again? Fine. Yes, even though my favorite person isn't here, I will help you all. Who's your favorite person? Who's your favorite don't you, person? Don't you, don't you, don't you. It's I mean, God's Virgil, Virgil's that. literally oh. saying out loud, don't you dare say it. It's God's, don't well, when it. you all left me alone, he was the only one who'd visited me out in the woods. He made sure the vines didn't grow on me for a while before he left on his journey. He was the only one who talked to me. Okay. Okay. Only, because it is, only because it is stated canon that I I know Virgil for a fact would not leave this ship out in the woods for a year, but because it is stated canon that he has no, not no, been no, there, no. I am going to make me murder <laughs> this I'm going to throw you under the bus like this, but this felt like a fun reveal for you. I like it. Ooh, there, okay, ooh, your, idea, back, Masood. your idea of fun and our idea of fun is two different things right now. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Hey, hey, okay, I can't so, wait for you all to have Because also, so, wait, 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 because Stranger Solis wouldn't have left that ship alone either. No, no, no. I 100% well, did. You all. Oh, well, you, were like on eight, you had eight jobs. Of course That's you did. But like, <laughs> and I just fucking left. Yeah. yeah like, so, you, know, um, you all hid it away. A, I remember when you arrived, you were like, we're going to hide it. We're going to cover it up with stuff, make sure no one sees it. And then I, I, I asked you all what you all got up to in the past year. Uh, and, and I didn't mean to be rude when no one said anything about that's it. And that's funny. That's it fine. Fun. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> I it's like it. Fine. But and you see, and, and the, the ri <laughs> rival talks to you. He's like, "Yeah, okay, fine. I'll back you all up." I mean, listen, we're continuing the mission, but in a more sort of you know more to the source of the problem sort right. of way. So. And since we were on it first, while Tara and I get to take point, and you guys will listen to our command. I'm sorry. What? While, while Terry says, oh, not. Oh, rival, I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> and that's where we're going to end today's yeah. episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, let's we'll go around and do our outros. If you have any questions for us, put them in the chat. Uh, we'll try to get to them quickly. Uh, Sh Sharif is usually with us. Unfortunately, he couldn't be with us uh, this episode. You can find him online at Sharif Jackson on Twitter. Uh, he's got a lot of cool stuff and a lot of great interesting notes. Um, and also sometimes uh, wisdoms and nuggets of knowledge from being a father. Uh, we love to yeah. hear about it. Uh, moving right along, we've got you, Hedio. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Eugenio. I'm DM Jazzy Hands. Uh, you can find me on the internet at DM Jazzy Hands here on Twitter and on Twitch. Uh, actually, in about an hour, I am going to be over uh, hanging out on twitch.tv slash gaming mag uh, for a little, uh, little podcast uh, panel about diversity in gaming with some other awesome folks. Uh, so come on over to, to that channel at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. Uh, for a little for a little chat. Uh, other than that, I stream on my channel on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, I think we got probably one or maybe two more streams of Citizen Sleeper. Uh, really cool narrative story based kind of game with some dice mechanics. That's very cool. Uh, been doing that. And then on Wednesday nights, the final season of my uh, D and D podcast, The Last Refuge. Uh, this Wednesday is episode eight of ten. We are in the home stretch of it. Uh, things are intense, and I'm excited. So come hang out on Wednesdays with me uh, on my channel that's it heck yeah moving right along we have brian uh hi yeah i am brian i am urban bohemian pretty much everywhere on the internet i don't have a ton of stuff going on as he panickedly looked at his calendar to confirm that um however um no not at all so what is happening is uh destiny 2 lightfall drops tuesday so uh, my channel will probably be all destiny 2 neon synth wave 80s awesome stuff all the time yeah. so do pop by over there twitch.tv slash urban bohemian and um otherwise yeah you will see me back here with these awesome folks because i think i actually get a bit of a love slow time it's yay yay nice. <laughs> heck yeah <laughs> moving right along we've got tanya 
Um, I'm thankfully not doing a whole lot of anything in the upcoming week, but Tuesday, uh, sneak peek, we are doing a Creator Camp stream on Twitch's Creator Camp channel. I think it's just twitch.tv slash creator camp about setting boundaries as a content creator. Um, it'll be myself, Pikachu Lita, Technique, uh, Ray, who is Twitch staff, and we're waiting on one more person to confirm, and that'll be at 1 p.m. Pacific, I'm sorry, 11 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern. So that's what I'm, that's the one thing I'm doing uh, publicly. The rest of it is getting through the rest of Black History Month. Oh, before I forget, uh, Twitch. Oh, two days, two days. Oh, you're right. Um, <laughs> two more days. <laughs> Twitch asked me for book recommendations, mm -hmm. and uh, that tweet went out yesterday. I will throw that in the chat. So it's, if you like the tweet, please uh, help get better engagement because, well, people being people are on that tweet. So that's it. That's me. Terrific. And up next, Latia. Me, hi, uh, I'm Latia. You can find me everywhere at Latia Jaquise. And if you like, hold on, my throat is about to kill me apparently. <clears throat> All right, I'm alive. Uh, alive. You can find me, I don't know what just happened. Uh, you can find me on uh, Tuesdays uh, on D&D Beyond's Twitch, actually, at 2 p.m. Nice. Pacific, 4 p.m. Central. Uh, just having some community hangouts. Um, we've done character creation. We uh, interviewed some folks who wrote on Keys from the Golden Vault. Uh, it's just a good time for an hour. So uh, come hang out with us and see what we've got cooking up this week. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Awesome. And then that just leaves me. Hi, I'm Masood. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Maroodboy, M-A-H-R-U-D-E-B-O-I. I'm doing Rivals. That's kind of the only thing I'm doing on the internet right now, which feels really fun. So please tune in every week while we do that. We'll be back next Sunday with another phenomenal episode as we're rounding out our journey. Um, in the meantime, we have some questions for folks. We will respond to those on Twitter because we are unfortunately running a little bit out of time. But if you are still here, we thank you for hanging out with us. We thank you for all the folks who allowed to make us possible, everyone who supported us through Indiegogo, everyone who did the things on Patreon. We thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and we want to now also support one of our friends, DJ. We're going to go raid them. So please stick around as we get into what they're getting into. Thanks for watching. We've been Rivals of Waterdeep, and we'll see you next week. Bye, y'all. Bye.